The race for U.S. Senate is heating up here in California. The four major candidates faced off in their first debate tonight at USC. And KKL News reporter Lori Perez joins us now with highlights from tonight. And, you know, tonight was a very big night. It did get a little bit feisty, the first of at least two debates in the race to succeed the late Senator Dianne Feinstein. The focus was not so much who came out on top. Adam Schiff is the front runner in the polls. Instead, tonight was about who would secure number two in the March primary and stick around for the election in the fall. Mr. Garvey. The four leading candidates for California's coveted U.S. Senate seat took the stage at USC, though at times it seemed like three against one. Twelve-term Congressman Adam Schiff, U.S. Representative Katie Porter, and Congresswoman Barbara Lee grilled former Dodger, Republican Steve Garvey, on whether he'll support Donald Trump again. Republican opponent here on this stage uh, has voted for Donald Trump twice. This is not the minor leagues. Who will you vote for? What more do you need to see of what he's done to be able to say that you will not support him? At the end of the day, it's all a personal choice. Schiff holds a lead in the polls. Some polling has Garvey tied with Porter for second. The pressure to emerge, particularly for Lee and Porter, is clear, as only the top two vote-getters in the March 5th primary will advance to the November general election. Zev Yaroslavsky is a former L.A. County supervisor. What Garvey uh, showed tonight is that he's, he's not seasoned. Some sparks flew, uh, some differences emerged, uh, but as far as the Democratic, uh, the two principal Democratic candidates, Schiff and Porter, uh, not, not so much difference in terms of policy, uh, a lot of differences in personality. Past a battle to knock Garvey out, the Democrats have to face each other. They do have nuanced differences. The most vigorous exchange over whether to call for a ceasefire in Israel's war with Gaza. Ceasefire is not a magic word. You can't say it and make it so. But we have to push as the United States, as a world leader, for us to get to a ceasefire and to avoid another forever war. Alex, Mr. Yeah. if you don't have a permanent ceasefire now, more people are going to get killed. Uh, I support a two-state solution. We have to get back to a road to two-state solution. But Israel has to defend itself. We can't leave Hamas governing Gaza. And I should note, Yaroslavsky thinks this race is still wide open, making these debates all the more important. He really sees them as job interviews. And the mm -hmm. voters, of course, are the ones doing the hiring. It was interesting what um, Zev said in terms of uh, Steve Garvey saying he needs to be more seasoned, or you could tell he's not. Laurie, in, in, in your view, was there a clear second place finisher tonight? You know, I don't think that there really was. I think we're so familiar with all the other three candidates mm -hmm. that, um, you know, they seemed so familiar to us and they really solidified what we've already known about them. I'm not sure that there was a clear winner, but I think, to Zev's point, I think that Steve Garvey, um, if you want to call it, it, was a loser because he, he did not really display the type of um, understanding and nuance in his opinions about policies mm -hmm. and his stances on policies that, you know, people are really looking for in debates. And uh, so I think that that will matter. And that's, of course, as, as Zev said, that's why these debates are so much, uh, so very important. So I guess we'll see if uh, mm -hmm. he actually improves the right. more debates that he does, because I guess this would be the first debate of its kind for him in this particular forum. Absolutely. And, th and then there's another debate coming up, uh, I believe, February 12th. So mm -hmm. he has a little bit of time to kind of uh, clean things up. Yeah, regroup, right? Exactly. Okay. okay. Thanks so much, Lewis. You're welcome.